Now, my presentation today is really to address this uh, myth one, uh, which is ethanol ruins engine performance. Okay, it's true that ethanol does have less energy content per gallon than gasoline. If you look at the table over here, you'll see as you increase the amount of ethanol in the blend, the amount of energy does decrease. And in fact, E10 has about 3% less energy than straight gasoline. E85 has about 20% less energy than gasoline. Now, energy density of fuel is important as it does impact fuel economy and range of the vehicle. However, if you look at the column on the right hand side there, you'll see that under real live testing of vehicles in the field, if you look at say an E10, the vehicles average uh, about 1.4% less in fuel economy, not the 3% you'd expect based on the energy content. That's to say that the fuel economy of ethanol blends is not directly proportional to the energy content. Now, why is this? Well, there's positive beneficial properties of ethanol that, if exploited, can assist improve the fuel economy of the vehicle. Uh, just as a, a reality check, there's other factors such as driver behaviour and tyre pressure that have a bigger impact on miles per gallon. But these are what I call more sort of destructive type impacts. The ethanol, yes, it does reduce the fuel economy, but if it's cheaper, in the end, if it's the uh, uh, dollars per mile travel is lower, the end consumer is better off. And I think all of us would be happy to send our money to the local farmers here as opposed to sending it off to some sheiks in the Middle East. Okay, so the good news is that ethanol has other benefits like high octane. Now the octane rating, I think you're all very familiar with that, but uh, it's just a measure of the anti-knock properties of the fuel. So the higher the octane, the higher the cylinder pressure you can operate it without causing destructive damage to the engine. So high octane is good for extracting the maximum performance from the engine and also improving the efficiency. So if you look at E10 uh, fuel, it's blended to 87 AKI, anti-knock index, which is the, the pump rating. Now, premium fuel is 93 octane. If you look at E85, it has 99 uh, anti-knock index. Now, a lot of the E85 cars out there are really cars that are designed to be to run on gasoline, and by the way, they're compatible with E85. What we're talking about here is let's design engines that use that high octane property of the uh, fuel and exploit that to get the best efficiency and the best power density out of the engines. Ethanol also has a higher latent heat of vaporization, which means when you inject it directly into the cylinder, it has a, a major cooling effect, much better than gasoline. So it absorbs a lot of the heat. There's two benefits from that. One is that the cooling effect allows you to, to push more air into the cylinder, which means more torque. Right? And the other one is that cooling the cylinder also reduces the tendency to knock, which means you can push your, heart, your engines harder and provide even more performance from those engines. There's also some other benefits of ethanol. It does actually burn faster, which improves the thermal efficiency, or the efficiency of converting chemical energy of fuel into mechanical power, and also uh, burns cooler than uh, gasoline, providing you're keeping the same air fuel ratio. It's also a renewable resource and therefore important for national security. Now the most, the, the most difficult thing for the automotive industry, well, the biggest challenges have come through regulations dictated by the government, primarily uh, NHTSA and EPA and also uh, ARB if you're uh, in California. Now there's been some new requirements brought in which really affect the amount of CO2 generated which is like a greenhouse gas emissions, and also there's some cafe uh, requirements now where all the manufacturers are required to meet certain fuel economy targets by 2025. Now, if you look here, we actually see the glide path between now up until 2025. So the manufacturers are currently meeting a, need to meet about 27.3 miles per gallon. That's the average of uh, trucks and passenger vehicles. Uh, but by 2025, they've got to reach 54.5 miles per gallon. That's doubling the fuel economy. So that's quite a, a big stretch. And if you think about it, it's a very short time period. And there's only sort of 
two to three model uh, changes within that period. So how are we going to get there? Obviously there's a lot of big electrification to be done. So you'll see a, a higher proportion of hybrid and electric type vehicles out there. Um, but the conventional engine will still be used in these hybrids as well in, as in non-hybrid vehicles. So the engine is to st stay around for quite a while. So it's important that we address the efficiency of these engines. So future engines will have a natural thirst for higher octane number just to improve the efficiency. Uh, now why? If we start, we have fuel with a certain energy content, whether it's ethanol or uh, ethanol blend. Uh, by maximising the efficiency, we can achieve these mandated fuel economy targets. What impacts this uh, efficiency really is a, a function of several factors, one being engine design, another vehicle design, obviously drive cycle, the type of cycles you're on, the vehicle behaviour and environmental. Today we're only going to really discuss engine design. Uh, now, with engine design, the fuel properties have a major impact on the overall performance of the engine. So we can exploit the fuel properties uh, through engine design to improve the overall efficiency of engines. Now, historically, uh, most vehicles have been port fuel injected, naturally aspirated. But as you know, over recent years, there's been a tendency to start introducing more direct injection, naturally aspirated engines. We've actually gone through three levels of, uh, I'd say, generations of uh, uh, GDI-type uh, technologies. We've gone from uh, directing the spray off the piston to directing the spray off the cylinder wall, and the latest is really spray-guided, where you're controlling the spray around the, the spark plug and using multiple injections of, of varying duration and variable spacing to improve the efficiency. Uh, of course, Atkinson uh, cycle engines are becoming more prevalent these days, mainly in hybrids. They provide a, a bigger expansion ratio to extract that little bit more energy out of the uh, cycle. Then, uh, of course, we're still using port fuel injection, but putting turbochargers or superchargers on the uh, vehicles or engines, uh, sometimes a combination of both using series sequential type uh, boosting arrangements. And then finally we've got a uh, combination of both direct injection and boosting. Now direct injection is really the, the fuel uh, path handling and the boosting is the air path handling. Both those type of technologies benefit from the properties of ethanol or high octane fuels as well as the high latent heat of vaporisation. Now within this uh, direct injection boosted uh, group, there's actually three major categories. One is DI boosted with enrichment. By that I mean the vehicle's running stoichiometric air fuel ratio, but it has to run rich at high loads. So if you're really pushing the engines harder, obviously you're going to reach these points where you've got to put in extra fuel to avoid overheating uh, you know, exhaust valves and after treatment components. But that has a major impact on emissions, of course, the hydrocarbons and a slight impact on fuel economy. The next area is uh, DI boosted without any enrichment, which means you're running stoichiometric air fuel ratio across the entire speed uh, uh, torque range for the engine. Now that actually is made possible by using ethanol because it does burn cooler. On our test on the dynamometer, we were running about 100 degrees C uh, cooler on exhaust gas temps at high loads. Uh, and the final area really is direct injection boosted, but running lean. That could be homogeneous uh, lean or um, stratified charge lean. Now the uh, Ricardo's EBDI demonstrator vehicle really looks at both of these uh, technologies. So it goes from zero, like E0 or straight gasoline up to uh, E85. Uh, so what is EBDI? It stands for Extreme Boosted Direct Injection. Again, it is a Ricardo technology demonstrator, so it was really an R&D project. If you've been downstairs and seen the exhibit, you'll see what, what, what we're talking about. But it is not production intent yet, but the concepts and principles can be applied to uh, future production uh, engines. So EBDI is an example of extreme downsizing. In this case for that uh, demonstrator, we actually chose a GMC Sierra, so it's an 8,000 pound truck typically has a 6.6 .6 or 7 litre uh, diesel, I think a 6.6 .6 litre uh, gasoline engine as well. So uh, what we did was we developed a 3.2 litre spark ignition engine. We used the GM high feature V6 because Ricardo helped General Motors design that engine. So 
So we knew that engine very well. So we used that as our starting point. We modified that engine. We included uh, boost systems, EGR, direct injection, uh, and such. And we provided the performance of a six to seven litre diesel by utilising the high octane properties of E85. Yet we also made it compatible right down to E0 fuel. That provided a number of fuel economy benefits. And even though we were targeting a light duty truck, these benefits, well, this sort of technology could be used on passenger vehicles, you know, trucks, medium duty vehicles, as well as off-road applications. We're sort of targeting an engine that would behave like a diesel, but still be spark ignition. Because diesel engines these days have a high cost penalty because of the after treatment systems. You need to have your uh, particulate matter uh, filter, so DPF, for the soot. You need to have either an LNT or an SCR with your urea injection to reduce the NOx, as well as a DOC. So it's a very high cost after treatment uh, system. With our system, we still run stoichiometric, so we use the conventional three-way catalyst, which is a lot cheaper. And again, there's obviously a, a lot of areas the, uh, this sort of engine technology can be used, and it's quite scalable. So now we look at the actual fuel economy. So shown on here, on the left axis, we'll see that there's the uh, actual fuel economy. We just looked at uh, three cycles, FTP 75, which is sort of an urban uh, city cycle. Then we have US 06, which is a very aggressive uh, drive cycle. And there's a highway cycle. Now, for the uh, urban city cycle, we actually achieved 26.5% better fuel economy with EBDI engine compared to the gasoline, and 3.5% better than the diesel. So we're saying we're getting equivalent fuel efficiency to the diesel by extreme boosting. If you start looking at the performance, we have the uh, engine torque and speed. And we'll see the curve in the bottom is the standard gasoline engine used for this uh, Sierra truck with a peak torque of about 550 newton meters. And then there are two diesel variants uh, which provided uh, lower RPM but higher torque. Uh, if you look at the green curve here, you'll see this is the EBDI engine running on E85. So this 3.2 litre produced as much torque as this, like a 6.6 .6 and 7 litre engine. Uh, although at a slightly higher RPM range, lower than a standard gasoline, so it was designed more to behave closer to being a diesel. So it's more low revving, but quite, not quite as low as a diesel, but a very wide operating speed range. So again, the EBDI approach using high octane fuels such as ethanol is a scalable technology for different vehicles and markets. And the myth that ethanol ruins engine performance is busted. High octane properties of ethanol can be leveraged to significantly improve engine performance.